Hello everyone, it's Ahmad here. In this video, I want to introduce you to this really great tool which you can use to create PBR textures from photographs. A little bit of disclaimer in the start, as there is almost no documentation available for this software. I have only learned it using other online tutorials and just by playing around with it myself. So I cannot tell you each and everything. I just want to introduce you to my workflow to create some PBR textures. The good thing about this tool is that it's completely free. Uh, you can use it for whatever you want and you can download it from the link in the description and in the you can, you can see on their website what it can do and they actually say that this tool was used to create uh, environment materials in Uncharted 1 and 2 games and from what I know this was the in-house project for the for that company and now they have released it open source for people to use so let's get started this is the interface you see when you fire up the program you can use your mouse to control the scene so right mouse and drag will rotate the object A middle mouse will pan the object and you can scroll to zoom in and zoom out. You can see the, all the controls here as well. And here you can change some settings uh, for this program. For this tutorial, I have decided to use this photograph. This is an image I downloaded from textures.com website. This is not a seamless texture. You can see there are still some shadow and light effects. And we, I will show you how to use the materialized program to make some usable PBR textures from this photograph. So let's load our image. We will load it in the diffuse map and then we will use this map to generate our height map and normal map and metallic and smoothness maps. Every map has these buttons to load images. This is paste, copy, open and save. So let's open our diffuse map. Okay, as you can see, this is not a complete square image. This is a rectangular image, something which we can also rectify in this program. Okay, now we can hit the edit button to see what we can do with it. Uh, there is this bar here. This is the diffuse reveal slider. You can use it to compare between the original image and the result of your operations and the new image is on the right side and the original image is on the left side here you can add some blur to your image which I don't want what I want is to remove light so let's see and you can see it it does try to remove some highlights from the scene and let's this looks good let's try to remove some shadows okay this also looks okay you can remove hot spots and some dark spots but we don't need that at the moment let's kick this keep original color slider a little bit so that it does not deviate too much from the original image and then you can set it as diffuse so the next thing to do is to create a height map or bump map so we need to click this create button and it has created a bump map but we need to adjust it to make it work for us so now we know that in this image this sand area should be lower and the stones should be higher and we need to adjust it to make it look so in this height map settings there is also this reveal slider which is very handy and you can choose to use the diffuse that we have created right now or the original diffuse that we loaded into the program I will use this diffuse okay this step requires a little bit of playing around with these slider values here I suppose what they are doing is that they get the color values from the original image divide them up into different frequencies and then map those frequencies according to the output specified by these controls 
and I have always tried to play around with them until I get the result I desire. So let's see here. Okay. Okay, so this seems to be something along the lines of what we want here. So the sand is now a bit darker and the stones are of a lighter color. Let's use this final gain here to make this a bit normalized. Use this contrast to introduce some contrast into the scene. And you can also use this color sample and pick a color from the scene and you can use that color as the low or high point of the scene. But for this we don't need it. Okay, this looks good enough. Let's set it up as our height map then. Uh, now let's move on to the normal map. So click create here and you can see it has already created kind of okay map as before you can play around with these uh, frequency controls to change how your normal map looks and but for me it seems okay you can also use these quick uh, buttons it's so the normal map is more smooth more crisp it has more pronounced effect this is kind of a mid-range result. For me, the default is okay. I will try to decrease this frequency a little bit. Okay, I uh, let's see. This this seems fine for the contrast. You can use this shape recognition slider. Okay, this seems kind of okay. And then there are some other more controls. But for this image, I don't need to play around it more so let's set it up as our normal map okay let's move on to the metallic map click create as before and for this image there are really no metallic objects in the texture map so I will just decrease the contrast and maybe try to make it as dark as possible set as metallic so let's move toward the smoothness map, which is actually the invert of roughness. And so I suppose this program is using the metallic roughness uh, workflow of the PBR pipeline. So for roughness, I want to make our texture pretty rough. And so I will decrease the smoothness until it's close to... something like this should work so set it as our smoothness and we can go ahead and create an edge map and an ambient occlusion map but we don't need that right now this also has some option to create some post-processing effects uh, from this button in this menu for post-processing you can see you can add bloom or lens flare or some lens effects and a depth of field effect but we don't need that for now so we just close it we can preview our textures on an actual material by clicking this button and now you can see it looks kind of okay you can preview it on some other objects as well like a cube And I want to decrease, let's see, decrease the displace, displacement a little bit. So this is giving us some really good results. And you can also view it on a cylinder. Or a sphere. You can change your environment lighting by using this button. So it 
the software comes preloaded with some environment maps that you can test. As I said before, this was not a seamless texture. So if you use it, then you will have some seams, uh, visible seams in the texture. So to fix that, uh, the software has this option of tile maps here. And in this menu, you can first set up your size of your final texture. So it's 2K. You can also test your tiling at this bottom uh, sliders here. So you can increase it to see how tileable texture would look like. So as you can see there is some kind of seam here that's visible at this area. So to remove this, you can overlap X and Y edges of the map more using these sliders. So let's try this. Okay. Now it's the you can see that the seam is less visible and also overlap Y a little bit. You can also increase this edge fall off. Okay, it looks more or less fine now. That, and then in the end you can press the set maps button and it will uh, set all of your maps according to your seam settings here. And this will also make sure that your text, the final textures are actually square textures. So let's save our textures then. You can select your, the image type that you want to use from here and click the save project button and let's go this here and enter the name sandstones S press select and if you go to that folder you have all the textures here and also a project file which you can directly load into materialize later if you want to work on the textures a bit more and in the end i want to show you an example of how these textures can be used uh, i have used a plane and just applied the textures using a principal bsdf shader on that plane i've also used a displacement modifier using the height map. I will make another tutorial for this displacement effect. Another example of using materialize is with this sofa. I make, made the fabric using photographs of the fabric and then creating PBR textures from that photograph. This is a real photograph of the sofa. And then this is a photograph of the fabric that I took. This is the height map and the normal map which were created using the materialize and then I just applied them using the principal PSTF shader and you can see the results are pretty good here. So now you can see how easy it is to create good quality PBR textures from simple photographs of everyday objects. That's it for now then. Goodbye.